Hello and welcome to Authentic Conversations with Andy and Janine Mason. You're with Janine Mason, where we're talking about the messy intersection between faith, family and work. Hey, I want to tell you about a few events that we've got coming up in just a few weeks now. We have the Heaven and Business uh, Annual Conference that's in Atlanta and you want to check that out on heavenandbusiness.com slash events. We've also got a couple of workshops coming up, one in Birmingham, Alabama and in Washington, D.C. So you also want to check those out. And keep your eyes peeled because we do have a marriage uh, workshop slash having fun together event in Puerto Rico that details will be coming soon. So check those out too on heavenandbusiness.com. Hey, I wanted to talk to you this morning about what to do with an encounter with the Lord. And when I say an encounter, I mean anything really that you, anytime that you've had with the Lord where uh, you feel like his presence is on you. Maybe you've read a scripture and something comes alive. All these things where really, when we're talking about an encounter, it's just like an encounter with a person where there's some sort of intersection between you and he, and then you go on with life. And really what this comes from is we've just been at this amazing event at Kings and Priest at Global Awakening. It was a, a business event. Uh, the presence of God was there. Amazing. 250 people just in the, in the room uh, worshiping the Lord together. Fantastic time. And as I felt myself, just the, the uh, impact of the Lord with me, and as I watched many people get touched, it just made me realize that that's just the start of the journey. And so often we think it's the be all and end all, but actually it's just the beginning. Uh, in Second Corinthians, I believe it's three, it talks about we are changed as we come face to face from glory to glory. We're transformed in his presence. And there's something that happens when you get in the presence of the Lord and you uh, look at him and you hear from him and over and over and we are slowly changed. But there's also something that happens that's more our part. We've had those encounters, we've had those moments, uh, then we move on. And if we don't, if we're not careful, we don't sort of get all that the Lord has for us out of that time. I can remember when I was in my early 20s, we had some amazing meetings with the presence of the Lord. I mean, it was crazy. Things were happening. People were on the floor. People were laughing. And all that's happening. And some of the people that I saw get most touched, uh, most impacted, very quickly afterwards were had given up on their walk with the Lord. Um, remember girls that actually had open-eyed visions of angels, like incredible touch of the Lord. And yet within a few months were getting drunk in nightclubs and sleeping around. And it made me realize that there's, the encounters that we have are one part, but stewarding the encounter is so important if we really want to change. So what are you doing to steward your encounter? What does that really look like? Um, so Romans 12.2 says, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we have these two verses where it says, one is we're transformed by the encounter, by the face-to-face -face with him being changed from glory to glory. And one is that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. And both are true. And one part is almost like that's the Lord's part. He comes and he gives us an encounter. He speaks to us. He pours out on us. And, and we might feel a lot or we might feel just a little. We just become aware of his presence. But the next part is on us. And it's really using that moments, the moments that we have with him, turning that into transformation intentionally when we partner with him. It's not all him and it's not all us. If we try and do it all ourselves, all we're doing is we're, you know, we're trying really hard to be kind. We're trying really hard to be loving, but we actually need to just be transformed on the inside. And then it's easy to be kind because that's who we are rather than trying to do kindness on the outside. So what does that look like? I thought I'd share a couple of different uh, sort of encounters, different things that have happened and how I've done that. So one of those encounters is uh, I actually did, I was in a meeting and we were meditating on the word of, of the Lord. And as we did that, I actually just in my mind's eye, I saw myself come into a room. It was like there was a party happening and it was like Jesus walked in the room. And from the moment he walked in the room, he looked at me and he looked across. It was a crowded room and he looked and I could see him working his way over to me. And eventually he invited me to sit with him and everyone else was clamoring to be with him. And he very gently and kindly said no. And we sat on a couch together 
and he wrapped his arm around me and I I knew that um, then it was more about the fact that I had favor than the fact that I was loved. So it was really a, a really strong encounter for me of knowing that the Lord was bringing fresh favor on me. And favor is something that I had struggled to believe that I had. And it was starting to, the Lord was starting to talk to me about it. So here I have this moment with the Lord. And I can let it be just that moment. I can let it be just this intimate, oh, that felt wonderful. I have his favor. And then I carry on with life. But the Lord had been talking to me about favor. And so I had to start to take that and meditate on it. And I have gone back to that place many times. So the first thing I want to say is when you have a a moment with the Lord like that, go back. Keep going back. Remember, the Lord says, uh, you know, so many scriptures in the Bible, Psalm 143. I can't remember which verse right now, but it's talking about, I will remember the things that the Lord has done over and over in scripture. And so make sure that you remember those moments. Um, I have, you know, you can get little sort of memory stones. I have a a bracelet on today that has, uh, it's entirely possible written on it because I had an encounter with the Lord and I decided I want that to be something that I wear that reminds me of this encounter with the Lord. So here I have this encounter about favor. What am I going to do with it? Well, what's really interesting, I realized even as I was reflecting over the last few days that uh, the enemy has come in really strongly over the last couple of months to cause me to question that and it's like I've had this opportunity to believe the Lord or believe what people say what did that look like Um, we were in a meeting and I knew that somebody was going to be in the meeting who's actually going to be speaking that loves me but doesn't really see me doesn't I have no favor with that person and because that person is really powerful and in this certain environment It has rocked me at times, like, why doesn't he see me? Why doesn't he give me favor? And so I'm about to be in this room, and I just, I didn't want to steal my heart. I didn't want to lock my heart off, but I wanted to prepare myself so that I wasn't knocked. So before I walked into the meeting, I just paused, and in my mind's eye, I went back to that um, time with Jesus on the couch, and I just looked in his eyes again and heard his words of favor again and as I became aware of that then I really don't care about these other people so went into the meeting I'm sitting there and the person speaking and he kept eyeballing me and there was no difference in my interaction with him but there was every difference for me and and how I carried myself and it didn't knock me at all and um, I just enjoyed being in the presence so I'm sitting looking at him preaching looking at him talking and inside I'm looking into the eyes of Jesus and feeling his favor on me. I had a couple of other experiences, quite stark experiences. Uh, One where I kind of was having dinner with somebody and I expected there to be favor and there was nothing. And uh, it was to the point of like laughable, this person kind of almost ignoring us at a dinner table. And I went home and it was just this wonderful thing of, I don't feel moved at all because I know that I know that I know that I have the Lord's favor because I've been thinking about and remembering this one moment that happened in in a room as I had this encounter with Jesus. I then uh, another thing happened. We went to a certain event and something happened right before their event, which was just just felt like oh there is zero favor there. And it quite, it knocked me. It was kind of painful, actually. And so I had to walk away and just, again, Lord, I thank you that I have favor in your eyes, that I'm growing in favor with God and man. And you've been speaking to me. And I just, again, revisited in my mind this time on the couch with Jesus. And it just shifted everything. Did it, Was it easy? No, it wasn't easy. It was kind of painful, actually. But something happened on the inside where I said, actually, what the Lord said is more important. So that's the transformation of the mind piece for me. I actually am like allowing what happened in this one moment to happen over and over again and start to like rewire my brain where I've thought for years I had no favor. And then the Lord comes in and he says, let's think differently about that. Here's an opportunity to see it differently. So I pushed through, I've been continuing to push through, and here's what's remarkable. Uh, At the start of this event, I had this, ah, you don't have any favor. And as I pushed through, something shifted, and I saw um, just the favor of the Lord on me, Uh, you know, just 
things that you can see. So people came up to me, thanked me, all this stuff that was an outward expression, but it was an outward expression of the things that I've been building. So I've taken the encounter that I had, this one moment, and I've used it now to continue to grow and to lean in. And to be honest, I've gone back to that place and I've dialogued with the Lord many times, not just when the favor is called into question, but it's a place now that I meet with him and dialogue with him and talk and just feel his presence. So that's one sort of um, where I had, you know, this massive encounter. I want to tell you now, contrast it with just those moments, because those moments that you have in your own quiet time, just the little kind of blips where you could almost miss that the Lord is speaking to you and interacting with you, um, those are just as important to, to uh, lean into. So one of those for me was um, I... We asked the a prophetic team, Aqua Regia, check them out. Uh, they are a prophetic team that you can pay to um, speak into your business and ask them certain questions. Well, we asked them at one point, what is Janine's role to be within human business? And then they go to their team and the team knows nothing about who it is, nothing about the business. They just ask the question and they lean in and hear from the Lord. Well, we had this document and it was really clear that my role should not include all the day-to-day -day tasks, all the details. Now, if Andy and I are together, if you were to choose which one to give details to, it would definitely be me. I'm definitely the details girl compared to Andy. But we had this very strong word that I wasn't to get involved. And in the last month or so, as we went back and we were looking again at that, it was like highlighted again. Okay, don't lean into... In this moment, there's lots of details that need taken care of. There's an, you know, the conference to organize and the workshops to do. And Janine, don't do it. And I was like, okay. And and it wasn't until I had this other moment where I realized that I was driving into the grocery store multiple times a week. Uh, and it wasn't because I was disorganized. It was just like I kept just wanting to go. And I was like, why do I do that? And suddenly realized I do it because I like the time to think and to pause and to be in God's presence, which I do in the car a lot. And then it makes me feel useful. It makes me feel like I'm still doing something because I'm going into the grocery store or I'm going into wherever. And I realized actually I have permission to pause and to meditate and to be in the Lord's presence anyway. I don't need to jump in the car. And so I took those two little moments, like one when I had this realization, that's why I'm going into the grocery store. That's why I'm getting in the car so often. And I took this old prophetic word, which said, you know, Janine's going to get, and I realized, oh, it's because the Lord is making way for me to be in his presence, to uh, receive from him, to understand uh, um, the revelations that he wants to give me to write, to be ready to write. And so I was able to say to Andy, hey, I know it looks like I'm doing nothing. Actually, this happened yesterday. I was sitting in the sun and I was preparing actually for this podcast. And Andy kind of looked over at me like, and he didn't ask, but I, I felt like he wanted to know what was I doing? Why was I just sitting doing nothing? And I said, it might look like I'm doing nothing, but actually I'm planning. And so again, it's that I took these two little moments. One was a prophetic word and one was this moment where I real, had this realization, like this revelation. Actually, that's what I'm doing. And I brought them together and I went, oh, the Lord is speaking to me, that I have permission to sit and to be in his presence. That that's in a sense, uh, as I prepare to write, as I prepare to put curriculum together, that's my role and I have to do it from the place of seeing um, from heaven down to earth. So what about you? What encounters have you had with the Lord that you've had and you've enjoyed that moment, but you haven't actually gone back and asked the Lord, what does he want to do? Now, sometimes we have encounters and the Lord supernaturally does something and he rewires your brain and that's amazing. And sometimes you have encounters and you, you can feel the Lord's touch and it's not He's not really saying anything. You just feel his presence. And that's okay. We don't have to understand everything. But there's times when he comes and he speaks to us and he pours out on us and he gives us this touch, this like little taste of something. And it's an invitation to more. So when the Lord speaks to you, I remember having a, a prophetic word. I remember having this time the Lord said, it's going to be easy. And I thought all sorts of things. This is what it's going to be easy looks like. 
but I never went back to him. It was an invitation for me to engage with him, actually, and ask him what you know it's going to be easy looks like. So what about you? I encourage you to remember to go back to those places where you've had a touch of the Lord where he's spoken to you so clearly. I encourage you to lean back in, to re-engage with that encounter, to re-engage with him and to ask him questions. And I encourage you to lean in and let that actually begin to transform your mind, to transform the way you live so that you're not trying to muscle your way into becoming who you're supposed to be. You're not trying to muscle your way and you're actually being transformed from glory to glory because you're leaning in and now you're actually letting that encounter, those moments with the Lord change you. Look, the world is looking for us to be salt and light. They're desperate for truth. They're desperate for a different way. And it can't come unless we are continually being changed to be more like him, to being him in the earth. And that only happens when we are not only face to face with him and enjoying his presence and letting him uh, touch us, but also when we're leaning in to say, Lord, I intentionally want to let those moments now change the way I think, change the way I act so that I can become more like you. Hey, I pray that you would encounter him this week, that you'd encounter him, and but that also that you would take those moments, that you'd revisit them, that you would find yourself being changed on the inside from glory to glory. Uh, if you want more information about what Heaven and Business is doing, you can check out heavenandbusiness.com. Encourage you to check out some of those events. Those are events where you not only uh, will encounter the Lord, but you'll be given some really practical things on how to walk with Him in a greater way. I bless your week.